Brackets or angular plates have revolutionized the LEGO system forever and without anyone noticing you'll find them in virtually every LEGO set you own. Like literally, I picked a few sets at random in my office and I was not able to find one that did not have at least one type of LEGO bracket. One of two things that made them an extremely popular LEGO element is the fact that like most of the examples I'm showing here, they're great for placing LEGO pieces on the sides of builds, most of the time for decorative purposes like the grass patterns here on the Sonic set, the spike details and the banners of the towers on the Mighty Bowser set, a bunch of different types and colors on the tall neck as well, or even as details being on their own as we can see here on the Lightyear spaceship thrusters. But the second thing that made the brackets such a widely used element in LEGO sets is the fact that it makes models extremely sturdy by combining several brackets on different locations of models to secure them very tightly. Now before showing you how to use LEGO brackets, practical examples examples, tips and tricks, let's take a look at all of the different brackets in existence. There's the regular 1x1, one one, the 1x2, one the other 1x2, the 1x4, the 2x2 and the 2x4. But there's also the inverted versions of some of these. The 1x1, one one, the 1x2, one the other 1x2 and the 2x2. Two two. The measurements of these elements are all over the place, so they're not the most straightforward to use, especially these which are all 2.5 plates of height. Aligning them with regular elements is is a living nightmare. You can combine opposing brackets though using a regular brick in between them. You can match similar sizes or make combinations of different brackets depending on your needs. These ones are easier to use in the LEGO system though as they're exactly 5 plates tall. With a brick and a plate on their backs they'll be completely flush to the ground or using the inverted ones flush with the studs above. Combining the 2x2 brackets is very easy, with 2 bricks and 2 plates in between them you can match opposing brackets like so. They can also be aligned sideways with just a regular brick in between them like these and finally they can also be combined with the smaller ones in a variety of ways as long as there's a brick behind them. And for extra configurations don't forget the 2x4 brackets and the vertical 1x2s as well. If you look at the brackets from their side you'll notice the half plate sticking out of the piece. Another element that had an half plate measurement was the headlight brick I featured in a previous video. Now knowing this is very helpful because if you had the half plate measurement of the brackets and the half plate measurement of the headlight brick you get a full plate of height which makes these two elements super compatible. If you place them side by side like these the difference here is just a plate so adding a plate here will align the stud perfectly with all kinds of brackets. The plate of difference means this is also the perfect spot for curved slopes. Another combination I really like makes great use of the half plate of height at the base of the headlight brick, which matches the two and a half plates of height of these types of brackets. An inverted bracket at the base of this build with a plate and headlight bricks on top creates once again the sideways full plate gap perfect to align the studs like these or using curved slopes once again. If you move the bracket on top of the headlight brick it will work in the exact same ways described before, it will not work if you use the regular brackets instead. Another important measurement to be aware of is that a regular brick is two and a half plates deep. A bracket will always have the half plate sticking out of a build, but if you're smart about it, recess the bracket into a build and add two plates on top of it, you will have the studs being flush with walls, allowing you to place builds and details sideways if you don't have modified bricks around. If you use tiles instead of plates, you can have nice and flush detailing on a wall. I love having real pieces like these as some sort of ventilation system. With different shaped 1x1 tiles you can make some cool patterns, especially if you extend the build some more. And you also have the option of using jumpers and super jumpers to offset these studs for an even wider variety of patterns and decorative details. But these are all aesthetic purposes, the true value from brackets comes from making LEGO builds strong and safe. Now before diving into that, today's sponsor Atlas VPN keeps your online data safe. A VPN is a virtual private network that creates a secure connection between your devices and the internet, allowing you to browse safely without the risk of being tracked while protecting your data. If I'm using public Wi-Fi for instance, this is especially important for me as I would hate for someone to hack my channel and start uploading Megablox videos. Atlas VPN takes care of that. There's no LEGO Masters in Portugal 
Portugal, so if I want to watch the show versions from abroad, I can't because they're region locked. But using the Atlas VPN apps to connect to a US server will allow me to watch the US LEGO Masters show. The same goes for Netflix shows, for instance, that you can only watch in another country. A single subscription protects all my devices, and Atlas VPN is running a huge discount for a 3 year subscription for just $1.99 a month, with a 30 day money back warranty. Cheaper than most LEGO sets these days. Get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below, and now back to brackets. The examples I highlighted at the very beginning of the video are great to understand the value that brackets bring to the LEGO system. These towers would be too fragile without the support provided by locking the tower together on two different spots with the use of the brackets and the big tile. Jay's mech or the buildable Iron Man are also great examples because due to the fact that they are made to be handled, played and moved around a lot, all the limbs need to be well secured to maintain stability and avoid the models breaking during play. The opening walls of the LEGO Ideas Home Alone set uses the brackets very cleverly to 1. reinforce the walls and make them sturdier and 2. as decorations like the shutters outside or wall paintings and Christmas decorations on the inside. As controversial as the football table set might be, it's undeniably well built and a rather large model overall that due to the massive use of brackets all around to lock the build from top to bottom makes it a LEGO object that you can pick up without the fear of it breaking. Let's take the example of these two walls here. The first is built with just stacking bricks, and nothing wrong in that, but if you try and pull it apart like this, it will very easily break down. The second build uses two brackets only and a plate to bridge both elements, and you can kinda see where this is going. All the bricks are locked between the brackets, so they have nowhere to go vertically. If you want to use the same type of 2x2 brackets in succession, you'll always need to keep them at 4 plates of distance, or 1 brick and a plate of distance. If you're short on brackets, keep them at 3 bricks or 8 bricks of distance. Variations of these measurements won't be in system and won't allow you to lock the builds. If you're using complementary brackets, you'll want to keep them 6 or 11 bricks apart. Just be aware that the far the farther apart they are, the less likely they are to stay together, unless of course you lock them from both sides. All of this is extremely useful if you want to build big without being afraid of things breaking. Wall corners always seem to be the place to add details, so if you interlock brackets with bricks, making sure that you only use one type of bracket on one side and the complementary one on the other, you should have no problems. After building everything up, you're free to tile it, slope it or detail it in any way you can think of. I always go back to windows as they're often the places on LEGO houses that you need to add a little bit of detail to make boring and flat surfaces more interesting. For these you'll want to use the smaller brackets, always placing a plate in between them and the window element. This way windows with shutters can still open whereas if there's no plate in between the elements, they can't. After that you can add any type of detail you might think of. A build I always like to use brackets for are bathtubs. I'll start with a 2x4 tile and place 4 inverted brackets underneath. From here I'll choose if I want to do a chunkier bathtub with these rounded bricks and a few more pieces on these sides. The brackets place these elements at a 2 plate distance that you can close off with just plates or some modified ones for you to place a shower head or even smaller brackets for the faucet. Another option is using these curved slopes for a thinner design completed with 2x2 tiles on these sides. The distance between these slopes is now 4 plates, which you can, once again, try and be creative about to add the details you might need. Another use for brackets that's very widespread, even in LEGO sets, is using them for couches and small chairs. I've taken these two from the A-frame cabin as examples, where you'll start with a 2x2 plate, place two 2x2 inverted brackets on top, lock them with a seat element and then tile them on the sides or add a bit more details and shapes for a different design. If it weren't for brackets, these couches would look something like this. Not bad, but not great either. Consider watching this video next and subscribe if you'd like me making more of these piece highlight videos. Also, don't forget about the huge deal from Atlas VPN, a 3 year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back warranty. Get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below.